Hi, welcome back to educator.com. And this is the lesson on animals, part one. Some animal basics. If we look at kingdom animalia as a whole, what's typical of these organisms? Well, like plants and fungi, they're multicellular eukaryotes. Each one of their cells has organelles that have membranes, nucleus, mitochondria, Golgi, lysosomes, etc., etc. Motility. They typically move themselves. You'll see there are some examples, examples of animals that don't move themselves as adults, but that is rare. The vast majority of animals, they move as adults. They move as little babies, as little larval forms. And that's how they get around. That's how they get food. Heterotrophic, speaking of food, they eat. They don't make their own food. They have to get their food from outside themselves. And that source of organic nutrients varies depending on the animal. Sexual reproduction, that's very common in the animal kingdom. A male and female version combining their DNA uh, through the process of meiosis and making those little gametes that fuse together with fertilization. There are some that do asexual. Uh, that's not as abundant in the animal kingdom as sexual reproduction. Symmetry, usually there's some kind of body symmetry. Like you could divide their body in half and see two different sides or um, their body is more circular. And I'll tell you about those uh, types of symmetry in a bit. They have a gut. They have some kind of area where they take food in, break food down, and get rid of waste. Sometimes there's one gut opening, sometimes there's two. We have two, in and out, of course. Cephalization, having a head, having a head with a brain inside of it and sensory organs that um, are able to uh, see, hear, smell, whatever, that's cephalization, the process of making a head with a brain. Segmentation, usually there are body segments uh, for instance, a head, a mid-region, a bottom region, head, thorax, abdomen in some of them. Uh, so depending on the animal, the segmentation varies. Sometimes they have very repetitive segments throughout the body, like on an earthworm, for instance. And then sensory organs. Not all of them have well-developed sensory organs, but um, it's very common for animals to at least be able to sense light and react to light. Others can see, like us, shapes and colors uh, and hear a variety of noises and taste and smell, etc. So I have a variety of animals here in the picture. You've got uh, a cnidarian, a, a sea anemone, with its little mouth there, and it uses its stinging tentacles to grasp prey and bring it into its gut. You can see barely here and here a sea star, or starfish. Um, this is actually from a different phylum or group of animals called echinoderms. Uh, it has its mouth on the underside, and its anus is on the top. So this actually has a, a two, uh, uh, an opening with two uh, to its gut, you know, in and out. This has a one uh, gut opening. Here we've got a bird eating an earthworm. So animals eat, right? That earthworm was just eating before it got uh, picked off. Reproductive strategies. How do they make more animals? Animals reproduce sexually. That's typical. Um, there are some exceptions to that. With the sexual reproduction, you have these organs called gonads, and they're the organs that produce sperm or egg. Um, usually the uh, sperm-producing one is called a, a testis or testicle, and the egg-producing one would be called an ovary. Hermaphrodites will have both kinds. They can produce both sperm and egg. So some animals definitely fall into that category of hermaphrodity, um, so they can mate with any individual. The majority of them cannot self-fertilize because of the organization of their gonads within their body. They can't send sperm to the other part. But the advantage, like with an earthworm, uh, earthworm species, they're all hermaphroditic, they can mate with any other earthworm. They don't have to specifically find the other sex. Anyone will do. Fertilization. In terms of actually getting those gametes to fuse together, that sperm and egg, it can happen externally, meaning... The male and the female release sperm and egg uh, into the water. Um, and the reason why I say water is that's usually where you see external fertilization. Uh, sperm for them to travel need an aqueous environment, some kind of fluid to get them moving to where the eggs are. So usually aquatic organisms is where you see external fertilization. There are some animals in water that still do it internally, and you'll see examples of those later. But it's very rare uh, to find external fertilization on land. Usually with land animals, you're going to see internal fertilization, where they have to make contact, and the male will um, inject the sperm into the female's body, where they will fertilize the egg, and that's internal. 
Asexual uh, occurs with some. Like I said, it's not always sexual reproduction. Here are some examples. Budding. Um, so with budding, you can actually have this with sea anemones quite often. They will bud off, like meaning um, they can actually just have a little piece of them kind of pinch off and become a separate anemone. It's like cloning themselves, essentially. That's what yeast do, and this is what uh, uh, can happen with some simpler animals. Fragmentation, meaning uh, some animals... If you cut them, cut a part of them off, they will grow, regrow into another one. Uh, an example of that is the hydra. So a hydra, you'll see a picture of them later on in this lesson. They look like, um, they're named hydra because of the mythical hydra from Greek mythology. It was a dragon that had many heads, and when you would cut them off, they would regrow. So if you cut a hydra in half, it will make um, more hydra. Um, so it can actually, uh, with fragmentation, can make a new one. And regeneration is similar, meaning if I cut one of these off, it'll regrow uh, its little tentacle. Um, you can see this with other uh, animals like a planarian, a very simple kind of worm, a flatworm. It has uh, little eye spots there, and it's very flat and small. If you cut it in half, it'll make two new halves. Um, one side will make the new head end, one side will make the new tail end. And they're simple enough to do that. A lot of other animals, if you cut them in half, they're dead. Parthenogenesis. Parthenogenesis is when a female can self-fertilize. Um, it's, it's common in a lot of invertebrates, but with vertebrates, animals that have a spine, um, you will not see it. You will not see it in birds and mammals. It hasn't been observed in birds and mammals. So I've heard about it with uh, alligators, crocodiles. Uh, a female will be isolated for a long period of time and she'll give birth. She'll have um, eggs fused inside of her and, and lay eggs, lay offspring. Um, it's happened in some amphibians, frogs, for instance. It's happened in fish. But with birds and mammals, maybe it's something about more complicated reproductive factors. I'm unsure, but um, has not been observed in those. But parthenogenesis, uh, beyond vertebrates, uh, it can be observed as well.